Flinder, Beryl Calder, Simon Lack and Norman Claridge in Trees Die on Their Feet by Alejandro Casona, translated and adapted by George Leeson. Alejandro Casona died last year, and as he was considered a leading playwright of the Spanish-speaking world, we're repeating this production in commemoration of him. hasn't come yet, then. Who? The girl with sad eyes, wearing a berry and with a blue car. Oh, the bunch of roses girl. How did you know? Oh, I've heard it. Let me advise you again not to overhear. And if you do overhear, not to repeat. When will you realise that we're not dealing with packets of soap, but with people's lives? I'm sorry. The director will be in conference for some time, so if this girl arrives, make her comfortable. And do try to be discreet. Perhaps that's her. Don't be stupid. That's the staff door, the secret entrance. Probably the professor. Ah, yes, I thought so. I protest, I protest. Not again. Yes, again and again. I was appointed as a language specialist. Nine living languages and four dead ones. Forty years of study and five university degrees. And to what purpose? Why am I always sent out on inferior jobs? What? A mission involving the discussion of religious principles with an English lady... Scots, of... remember that. The lady never doubted for a moment that I was the Reverend James MacGregor from Aberdeen. Splendid, Professor. Then what are you protesting about? Another old maid. That's what. I've had four in less than a week. Well, you'll have no cause for complaint with your next assignment. That'll be masculine enough. Here you are. Uh, Change right away. Seaman's outfit. Oh, no, no, no. I refuse. Point blank. Where do you call that a job worthy of five university degrees? You're the only one who speaks Norwegian. Uh, uh, now, Professor, just think of the effect on those poor lads when they go into that tavern thousands of miles from home and hear you singing songs from the old country. Yes, I know. Great hefty blondes weeping into their beer. And enjoying every minute of it. Come on now, F-48. Well, that's another thing. That blasted number, F-48. Can you imagine anyone saying, I love you, F-48? You know the rules. It's better that none of us should ever refer to another by name or even know the names of the others. I agree with everything else that Shakespeare said, but how could he say what's in a name? Oh, still, I'll say no more. I'll endure the metaphysical agony of being buried beneath a letter and a number. Are you off again? For goodness sake, control yourself. Go and answer the door. Oh, very well. And you, F-48, get into the dressing room and change out of that Parsons outfit. I really don't see why I should take orders from you. Oh, don't be so silly. I'm the director's personal assistant. Uh, the orders, as you call them, come from him. Well, I'm all right. You... <laughs> ah, these clothes stink of seaweed. It's the bunch of roses. Uh, I mean, the sad eyes, berry and blue card girl. Then show her in at once. Oh, uh, will you come in, please? Thank you. We're really delighted that you've come. Won't you sit down? Thanks. Was it you who sent for me? No, I don't do things on my own. But the director will be very pleased to know that you're here. One moment. The director's office? Yes, what is it? The young lady you were expecting has arrived. Very well. There you are. I don't know how to thank you. Could you please tell me why you asked me to come here? The director will explain everything. Now just sit there and relax. The police! What on earth are you talking about? Go and answer the door. Oh, there's no peace here at all. What did she mean, the police? Don't alarm yourself, miss. She has the police on the brain. But why? I haven't the slightest idea. She's the nervous type, I suppose. There's a gentleman here who wants to see the director. He says he was sent by Dr. Ariel. By Dr. Ariel, then show him in at once. Uh, come in, sir, if you please. Uh, thank you very much. Take a seat, will you? I expect the doctor has told you. Nothing except to give me your address and to say that you are the only people who can help me. I have to go along to the director's office. I'll tell him you're here. Will you please wait with this young lady? I won't take the liberty of introducing you, but consider yourself friends. My name is Quintana. Marta Quintana. I am honoured, Senorita Quintana. And mine is Balboa. Fernando Balboa. Do I have to take this blasted accordion as well? Oh, 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 pardon me. I, I thought it was the secretary. Oh, you're new here, aren't you? Uh, yes, I, I suppose we are. Have they given you numbers yet? 
Mine's F-48. Numbers? Oh, no. They will. You mark my words. And then you'll be nothing but ciphers. Take my advice and get out while there's still time. Forty years of cloistered study. The Sorbonne, Oxford, Bologna. Just to go down to the docks and sing for those great hulking Nordic blondes who weep floods of beer. F-48. 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 Do you know what he was talking about? Oh, I wish I did. But I know one thing. He's no seaman. On the way here, I saw him in the park, dressed as a, a Protestant clergyman. He was sitting on a bench talking to a red-haired Englishwoman. Well, that is, unless she was in disguise, too. Oh, good heavens. Uh, tell me, have you any idea where we are? No, I haven't. Do you think we've come to the wrong address? Oh, let's see, shall we? Uh, what does your card say? 2448 Avenida de los Aromas. Exactly, and so does mine. Well, there could be only one such address in town. Do you think we should answer that? Oh, better not. You'll never know. Thank goodness. Oh, blast that thing. Hello? Yes, speaking. What? Oh, certainly not. The business of the kidnapped children is all finished. Yes, closed. Negative result. Oh, uh, P53, yes. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I, um, I have the details here. Yes, opium smoker. That's right, opium... What are you doing? Oh, here, give me that. <sighs> Hello? No, I'm sorry, it's impossible now. No, it just can't be done. I'll call you back. You'd better go and do the filing in the outer office. Oh, delighted, I'm sure. You must forgive me, but these employees are so stupid. The director will be free in about ten minutes. Opium smoker, kidnap children. That's rather extraordinary, don't you think? Well, one end of a phone conversation can be confusing, but the parson disguised as a sailor or vice versa, F-48 and the type is screaming about the police, they all add up to something. There's no doubt about it. We've fallen into a trap. What do you think it is, then? Oh, it could be some kind of a lodge or a sick. A secret sect. Some sort of sect, religious, not in these days. Political, a terrorist organization. Against ordinary people like us. What else could it be? Uh, tell me, how did you come to be here? Did they threaten you? On the contrary, they made me the most wonderful promises. Oh, you should have told me that right away. Now do you realize the danger you're in, my girl? A young girl, pretty and alone... Oh, why didn't you suspect this shady intrigue? You, you don't mean I've been kidnapped. Oh, what other explanation can there be? Oh, but they have me to deal with. I may be old, but I'm a gentleman, and I shall consider it my duty to protect you from these scoundrels. Look, the bookcase is opening. A secret door. Stand behind me. Look who's standing there. It's the blind beggar who stands at the park gate. Of course, he's not blind at all. Another disguise. Shh, he's coming in. Hello, this is S24 reporting. Mission completed. No complications. No, I can guarantee no one followed me. Quite a good haul. Four wallets, three watches, five cigarette lighters, two bracelets, 12 carat, one string of pearls, poor imitation. Right, I'll hand it into dispatch. OK. Hello, hello, hello. I didn't notice you. It's these dark glasses. Wait a minute, I'll take them off. Let's have a look at you. The recruits, I suppose. You're the wounded colonel, I imagine. Uh, wounded colonel? No, shame. It is a type. All you need is a white goatee beard, a walking stick and a monocle. Well, I must be off. So long, fellas. You see what it is? We've fallen into a den of common thieves. Then we must get out, quickly. Oh, all the doors will be guarded. Perhaps the secret door in the bookcase... There must be a button here somewhere. Uh, stop! Suppose you press the wrong button and blow us to pieces. Now, uh, wait. Let's study the situation calmly. Didn't I tell you 100% success in all my own initiative? Huh. You might hold me dogs for a minute, sir. Oh, don't be afraid of them. Just a little playful, that's all. Down, Romeo. Down, Juliet. 
Hello, supply department. This is T-41. Take a note. Required for dawn tomorrow, three dozen rabbits. Dead? Of course not. Alive, alive and kicking. Yes, I need more dogs, as many as you can get. Ten, fifty dogs. Hungry? Yes. Don't worry, I'll see that they're fed. Okay, so long, pal. Lie down, Romeo. Good dog. Hmm. You two knew here. Yeah? Knew? Yes, we've been initiated. Are you still under observation? Oh, half and half. You're novices, then. That's right, novices. Mm, don't worry, it's only the beginning that's hard. After that, you will get to enjoy it. Well, so long. Come on, Romeo. Come on, Juliet. You like You like Now, what do you make of that? It can't be real. We must both be dreaming. I could believe anything now. It wouldn't surprise me if that door opened and Napoleon came in. Napoleon? That's it. What? Why didn't I think of it before? Didn't you read in the papers about that mental home where the lunatics mutinied and locked up the attendants? Oh, vaguely. Well... The same thing has happened again. We're at the mercy of a gang of escaped lunatics. The dogs! The fifty hungry dogs! Oh, help! Dare to ask that? You, the prime organizer? Stand aside from that door, madam. But I don't understand. You know well enough. We are going out through that door, madam, and I defy you to stand in our way. Didn't you hear, Elena? Stand aside and let them leave if they wish. And who are you, pray? This is the director. There must be some unfortunate mistake, and the gentleman has the right to an explanation. Let me assure you, sir, that you are not among kidnappers, thieves, or lunatics. If you wish to leave, you may. And so may this young lady, if she wishes to continue living as she did till yesterday. I think we have heard and seen enough. Shall we go, Senorita Quintana? No, I, I think I shall stay. Tell me, sir, why did you say if she wishes to continue living as she did till yesterday? What do you know about me? Very little, but it is too intimate to be spoken about in the presence of others. Senor Balboa, you've been very kind to me, and I shall never forget it, but somehow I trust this gentleman, and I should like to have a private talk with him. Alone? Yes, uh, I'm sure there's nothing to be afraid of. I understand, sir, that you have been sent here by our founder, Dr. Ariel. Uh, perhaps you would like to go into the other room with my secretary. She will explain our whole organization. I cannot imagine any explanation of what I have seen and heard here. Please, I'm sure it would be all right. After all, I believe you need our help as well. Oh, very well. I'll go with your secretary then. This way, please. Are you quite sure you're not afraid anymore? No. It's something deeper now. I feel that my whole life hangs on what you're going to say to me. And before I can help you, you must tell me something. What happened to you last night, Senorita Quintana? What right have you to ask me? I have no right, but I must ask you. Leave me alone. Don't make me think about it. Oh, come. It'll be all right. <laughs> Look at me. I'm not a policeman or a judge. I don't be afraid. Just tell me what happened. I I, I couldn't go on anymore. I've never had a home, not, nor any brothers or sisters, and not even a friend. And yesterday, when I, I lost my job, I, I suddenly felt that I was such a failure, so useless. That's when I thought of buying the Veronal. I emptied the whole tube in, in the glass. Even though I put out the light, I closed my eyes. Then, suddenly... I heard something like a stone hit the window pane, and something fell into the room. Trembling, I, I, I put on the light. It was a, a bunch of roses, with a paper which had just one word on it. Tomorrow. Where had that message come from? Among so many useless words, who had found the one word which would save me? Tomorrow. I felt that I... I could not die without finding out. And I slept with the light on, hugging my roses. Mine, the first I'd ever received. This morning, when I awoke... There was a blue card under your door which said, Don't lose faith in life, 
We are expecting you and giving this address. Was it you? Yes. But why? How did you know? We have our sources of information. And when I heard that you had lost your job and I saw you walking along without feeling the rain, I had to follow you. How did you guess what was going to happen? I hadn't even thought of it then. Oh, the tube of veronal was suspicious enough. Then I saw you go into your room without closing the door. And when a woman does that, it means she has nothing more to fear. Please, don't make fun of me. Who are you? And what kind of place is this? Well, for centuries, there have been public charities in many countries, but no one but Dr. Ariel has ever thought that it could be an art. So that's it, a charity institution. Well, this is not a matter of shelter and free meals. We are attempting to provide charity for the soul. So. Who has ever thought of those who go through life without a, a single happy memory? Those who have never seen a dream come true or, or experienced the thrill of the gleam of mystery and faith? Are you beginning to understand? I don't know. It, it's like something from a book. Exactly. Why keep poetry locked up in a book instead of letting it out into the air, into the gardens and streets? <gasps> what a lovely idea. You should do that again. Do what? Smile as you did then. You do it very well. I think we could do with you in our organization. Oh, I wouldn't be much good. That smile alone would be an asset. Tell me, that man who came in yodeling with a couple of dogs... Oh, he goes out in the country letting loose rabbits and losing dogs. He's a protector of poor hunters. Well, I never. And the beggar who came in with a lot of stolen watches and wallets. Ah, the robber of thieves. He specializes in young lads who are starting off on the wrong track. He watches them through his dark glasses, and when he sees them lift something, he just lifts it back off them. <sighs> The stolen things are returned to their owners, and the boys find the card in their pocket saying, please don't do it again, lad, you're making it difficult for us. Uh, it works sometimes. Amazing. But really and truly, aren't you all just a, a little bit, you know? Oh, certainly. If there are any people left in the world who aren't complete idiots, then it would be a good thing if they were a little mad. Well, there must be some very moving stories, and quite complicated. Yeah, the most moving are usually the least complicated. Take the case of Judge Mendithabal. A human life saved by a bird song. One night, Judge Mandithabal was sitting at his desk about to sign a death sentence. He had signed so many that we knew his hand wouldn't tremble and that no tears and no appeals would deflect him. But we also knew that this man, who was insensible to human sorrow, had a soft spot for birds. Just as he was about to sign his name, a nightingale began to sing in the garden. It was like the very heart of the evening, pulsing there in the darkness. That icy hand trembled for the first time and laid down the pen. Judge Mendithabal realized for the first time that even in the meanest life, there is something so lofty and sacred that no one has the right to take it away. Don't tell me that you made the nightingale sing at your orders. <laughs> Not quite, but we have a wonderful imitator of bird songs. As a sign of gratitude, he sometimes goes back again to sing in the judge's garden. Now, would you like to join us? But what could I do? I have no talent. You have seen how a human life can be saved by a bird song or a bunch of roses. But to begin with, there is your smile. Thank you. You're very kind. Not at all. I assure you that I meant that as a mere statement of fact without any attempt at gallantry. As the director, it is my job to put that smile to a practical use. Oh, is that possible? It may be. Have you ever walked past the back of the jail? No. Oh, you will. It's a dreary waste littered with rubbish. Overlooking it is a barred window through which a man gazes across at the waste of rusty cans and broken bottles. You will walk past there at noon tomorrow, look up at that window and smile. And the next day you will do the same. And the next day and the next. And will that do any good? The greatest anguish of prison is the emptiness which makes time unbearable. When that man sees the miracle repeat itself, even his nights will seem shorter as he thinks, tomorrow at noon. I'll do it. Thanks. I knew it. Hello, Elena. You can bring that gentleman in now. Here's the gentleman. Is everything settled? Oh, sit down, sir, please. I won't keep you a moment. Yes, the young lady is staying. Uh, give her the room over the garden. Very good. Will you come with me, then, Senorita? Oh, yes, indeed. It was a wonderful kidnapping. Thank you for everything. Now, sir, your name is... Balboa. 
Fernando Balboa. And you feel more reassured now? I do, yes. I, I must say I was scared out of my wits at first, but the young lady, uh, your secretary, explained everything. I wasn't very hopeful when Dr. Ario recommended me to come here, but I really believe now that if anyone can help me, it is you. We'll do what we can. Tell me quite frankly about it. Imagine a large, happy family suddenly struck by misfortune and reduced to two grandparents and a grandson. The fear of losing the one we had left caused us to be too indulgent. That was our only fault. Soon it bore bitter fruit, undesirable friendships, whole nights away from home, gambling debts. Now, one day I caught him opening the drawer of my desk. There was a scene which I don't wish to remember. Though it hurt me to the quick, I slapped his face and threw him out of the house. Didn't he come back? Never. His only virtue was his pride. When we tried to find him, he had already stowed away on a cargo boat going to Canada. That was 20 years ago. You have had news of him? I wish I never had. Card sharper, smuggler, street fighting, false papers, gunman, professional rogue. Oh, of course, I kept all that from my wife. But our life together became a tense silence of unspoken reproach, which is worse than any accusation, as though I were the guilty one. And then she received a letter from Canada in which my grandson begged forgiveness. Three pages of wonderful promise and happy memories. That letter was a forgery. I wrote it. You? What else could I do? The poor woman was slowly dying, and those three pages restored her to life. Mm, rather elementary, but effective. Then there was no option but to continue it. My wife joyfully answered the letter, and every two or three months there was another letter from Canada. One day my grandson graduated at Montreal University. Another time it was a sway journey through pine woods and lakes. He became an architect. Then he fell in love with a charming girl. I tried to spin out the courtship, but eventually I had to marry them. But women are never satisfied. But something has happened to upset your plans. Last week when I came home, my wife came running out and embraced me, mad with joy, holding a telegram. After 20 years of absence, my grandson was coming home. I don't understand. What do you expect to achieve with that telegram? I? Oh, don't you see? The farce had come to life. It was a real telegram. From your grandson? He sailed a week ago on the Saturnia. Good heavens. You can imagine the sleepless nights I've had since then, thinking of that ship streaming towards me with its load of truth. A miserable, shameful truth. Now, don't worry. We'll arrange something. An ambush at the docks, a kidnapping party boarding the ship. There will be no need of that. Didn't you see last night's paper? The Saturnia went down with all hands. How terrible. And does she know? She mustn't know. I've kept all the newspapers away from her, cut off the phone and put the radio out of action. She mustn't know. After 20 years of waiting for just one day. But what can I do to help? We have no remedy against death. You don't understand. There is still the other grandson who must be saved. The one who wrote those wonderful letters. The only one she knows. He must come home. Ah, one moment. Do you expect me to supply a grandson for you? Not to supply. To be. Me? Why not? You've done more difficult things, apparently. The judge and then the nightingale. Oh, anyone can invent a bird, but a man has a real face, eyes and a voice. Well, luckily, he never sent any photos. And 20 years is a long time. What about the shipwreck? I told you she doesn't know. Or oh, any way he could have missed the boat or come by air. Well, even then, suppose I get through the first meeting. What then? You need only stay a week, a few days, even just one night. Oh, please. Unless your theories are all lies, you can't refuse this old woman one hour of happiness, which may be her last. Hmm. Um, uh, may I offer you a glass of sherry? No, thank you. Uh, I'll have one, if you don't mind. Well, uh, the worst of it is, I'm attracted by it. Will you do it? Uh, uh, don't rush me. I I'll have to think. <sighs> 
good. Uh, now, wait a bit. We've got to work this out. It's more than a little tricky. The university was all right, and we can manage the sleigh ride with a bit of geography, but these additional complications, well, making him an architect, and, and then to get him married, uh, uh, couldn't we invent a sudden divorce? No. My wife has very decided ideas on that. He, he could be coming alone. Well, why should he? Oh, family complications on her side. His wife has no family. She only had a father, and I killed him off last year in a hunting accident. Well, she could be ill. And he would leave her when they are so much in love. Oh, this wife is going to ruin everything. Um, dark? Blonde. Blonde. Deeply in love. An orphan. Uh, I must have another drink. Wait a minute. I've got it. Hello, Elena. Uh, bring the young lady back here, will you? Now, what do you think? She's blonde, and she actually is an orphan. And very charming into the bargain. Uh, will she do? She's ideal. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. You wanted us, sir? Uh, yes, uh, come in, both of you. Now, I want you to buy this young lady a complete outfit of clothes for all occasions. Uh, have some photos taken of her with a snow and pine tree background. Uh, label her suitcases, Hotel Ontario, Halifax, Canada. What? Is Senorita Quintana going to Canada? <laughs> no, she has just come from there. And drop the Senorita. Young lady, allow me to introduce you to your husband's grandfather. All the cleaning done. Feliz, sir? Yes, Genoveva? Have you finished everything upstairs? Have you hung the new curtains? No, I've just taken them down. Didn't Madame want the old ones put up again? Yes, she did. That's why I ask. And did you put the flowers in the room? Seven times. First, they weren't fresh enough. Then, they were too fresh. She wanted roses. He said a pine branch. Then she said it was the scent that mattered. And he said flowers are unhealthy at night. Oh, for the past week, it's been impossible to get any sense in this house. <laughs> Which flowers did you leave after all? All of them. <laughs> they can choose. Oh, I've had enough with going up and down stairs, putting up and taking down curtains, hanging and taking down pictures. Won't they ever decide? Well, it's no small thing, Felisa. Don't you get nervous when your boyfriend keeps you waiting half an hour? <laughs> yes, well, imagine what it's like to wait 20 years for a man. Did you put the linen sheets on the bed? No, the cotton ones. He said the linen ones are too heavy. When he says something and she says something else, you should agree with him and do what she tells you. Well, then, shall I leave the cotton sheets or take up the linen ones? Oh, the linen, girl, the linen. I made them myself, and it's as though I were covering them with something from my own hands. You understand? Oh, it's you, Mum. <laughs> yes, I understand, Mum. Well, up you go, then, and put them on. Uh, and close the door properly and pull the curtains double. The noise of the church clock might wake them up. Yes, ma'am. And leave the window wide open. Oh, what if the insects come in from the trees? No, it doesn't matter if the whole garden comes in. Up you go, girl. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know, Anna when he was a boy, he was mad on sleeping out of doors. Sometimes on a summer's night when he thought we couldn't hear him, he used to climb out on the bough of that jacaranda tree right outside the window. You remember that my husband wanted to cut the branch away some years ago? He was right, in a way. It blocks the window and keeps out all the light. Ah, oh, what does the light matter? I was sure that he'd come back. And who knows, but he might like to climb out there again as he used to. It won't be the same now. That branch could hold a little boy, but not a grown man. Well, why not? The jacaranda is also 20 years older. Uh, oh, uh, yes, now, uh, put the plates here. Uh, they'll be too far apart with the length of the table between them. Hmm. That's the way you always have it. Oh, for us, yes, but, but they've been married less than three years. A honeymoon. Oh, oh uh, the oven isn't getting cold, is it? I left the nut tart in on a low gas. I can still hear him yelling when he used to come home from school. <laughs> Not tart with honey, Grandma. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head like that? Not tart. Jacaranda, as though he was still a boy. Do you think a man who builds 30-story buildings is going to remember little things like that? Well, don't I remember them, then? And the same years have passed for me as for him. No, not the same. You've been sitting quietly here while he's been out in the world. What difference will that make? 
that his voice will be deeper and, and his eyes less bright? Well, will that make him any less mine? No matter how much he may have grown, he, he won't be too big for my arms to go around him. A man isn't just a grown-up boy. He's something different. I should know, with three sons lost in this wide world. Shh, shh. Hmm? Quiet. Can you hear a car? <laughs> it's the wind in the garden. Sit down and keep calm, Mum. Uh, yeah. I need strength to meet such happiness. I'm more used to facing bad news. Uh, get me a drop of water, please. Would you like another tablet? Oh, I've had enough medicine. And the only medicine that'll do me any good is what's coming. Do you think it's because I'm afraid of being tired that I'm not going out to the door? No, it's because I don't want to share him with so many others. He went out from this house, and here I shall wait for him. <laughs> What's the time? It's early yet. <laughs> the last few minutes are the longest, aren't they? Long, but, but full, as though he were part of them. I felt that many a time when I received his letters. I turned the envelope round and round before opening it, and I'd close my eyes and, and try to guess what was inside. Oh, it seems silly, but, but it makes the letters last longer. Oh, did you hear? The wind again. They won't be long now. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's like turning the envelope round. <laughs> what do you think that she'll be like? Who? Well, whom do you think? Isabel, his wife. Didn't he tell you in the letters? Oh, what does that tell me? People in love see what they want to see. Well, it's not that I have anything against her, but these women from far-off places... Jealous. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, a little, perhaps. <laughs> You look after them and watch them growing up from measles to algebra, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, someone unknown comes along and takes away all the fruit of your labor. I only hope that she's good enough for him. Now, now, can you hear them now? Oh, no, help me up quickly. Yes. Yeah. Oh, go to the door, Felisa, quickly. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, no, uh, not you, Hanover. No, you, you stay here with me. I know I'm going to be strong, but just in case. Brenda, open the door or I'll jump through the window. Brenda! <laughs> you hear him, as mad as ever. <laughs> Mauricio. Grandma. Grandma, darling. Oh. <laughs> At last. <laughs> Who said that my granny was weak? There's still plenty of strength in these little hands. <laughs> now, let me look at you. My eyes are not much help now, but, but they remember. They remember. Oh, how you've changed, my boy. It's 20 years, Grandma. A whole lifetime. What matter? Now it's it's like opening a book at the same page. <laughs> Let's see. Well, your hair's a bit thinner. <laughs> I probably left some of it over there. And your voice is deeper, more manly. But your eyes are different. So clear, but with the same laughter in them. <laughs> now let me see you laugh. What with my eyes? That's it. <laughs> and that little speck of gold that I was looking for. <laughs> the same as ever. It made me forgive you anything, and you know it, you rascal. But it's a good thing that something is the same. <laughs> my Mauricio. Mine. Mine. No, no tears. Haven't you shed enough? No, no, don't worry. These are different. And the last. <laughs> now, uh, turn to the light so that I can see you better. <laughs> One moment, Eugenia. Mauricio isn't alone, and he's in very good company. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Come in, young lady. Don't be shy. Look, Grandma, here is your beautiful enemy. My 
enemy? Now, why do you say that? Do you think it didn't show through in your letters? Who is this intruder who has come to rob me? Well, here is the intruder, the fair Isabel, the man-eater. Can't you see it in her face? Now, please don't take any notice of him, my girl. And that's just his way of talking. I should know. Madam. Uh, uh, oh, none of you, madam. There's going to be nothing stiff and starchy with us. Uh, uh, and you don't kiss my hand. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm glad. What are you looking for, Grandma? Something hidden in her eyes? No. They're clear and peaceful. And they can't lie. You look at her once and you'll know everything. Ah, I suppose this is the famous Henoveva. You know my name, sir. Grandma always wrote to me about all the good things in this house, and you're one of the good things. Oh. Two sons in Mexico and one on a ship in the Pacific, isn't that right? How are they? They're fine, thank you, sir. I brought the bags in from the car, sir. Oh, the chauffeur asked if you should go back to the customs house for the trunk. Oh, tomorrow, what we have will be more than enough for tonight. Yes, take them up, please. And uh, between ourselves, why call him the chauffeur? Just call him Manolo, as you do on Sundays. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, he's nice, isn't he, Henry? Yes, and a real gentleman. Ah, home again at last. And everything just as it was. The cedarwood table, the rigadoon fans, the easy chair where you sat and taught me what was right. All old and old-fashioned. But houses are like wine. They improve with age. Mm. <laughs> Do you like it, Isabel? Oh, I do. It gives me a funny feeling in my throat. I've always dreamed of a house like this. Hey, would you like to look round? I'll come with you. Well, there's no need. We've talked about it so much that Isabel could go round the whole house with her eyes closed. Oh, no. almost. There is the kitchen with its stack of firewood and the trap door and stair leading to the cellar. And over the garden is Mauricio's room with the branch of the jacaranda tree right against the window. Oh, you know that too. Oh, I don't know how many times Mauricio has told me if I go back someday, I want to climb out on that branch again. Oh, you see, Fernando, you see why you couldn't cut it down. Yes. <laughs> Come here, my girl. Oh, God bless you. Oh, Grandmama. <laughs> What's the matter with your child? Are you going to cry now? You mustn't take any notice of her. She's sentimental. Didn't you hear her say she always dreamed of a house like this? And she'll certainly have one. Oh, why have an architect for a husband? Oh, we architects don't build old houses. Time makes them. You'll take care of the outside and she'll make the inside. Promise? Promise. Just like that. Well, here in your own country, when a husband makes a promise, he seals it in a different way from that. Oh, Isabel doesn't know our customs. Yes, I do, Grandma. Thank you, Marithia. Like that? On the cheek? Oh, well, well, if that's your way. If I remember rightly, you've been married less than three years. About that? No, not about that. Exactly three years on October 6th. That's right. The 6th of October. Well, is that the way you kiss after three years of marriage? It looks as though things are different where you live. You see, darling, you're always so shy. What will Grandma think of us and of Canada? Now, show a little patriotism. <laughs> oh, 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 now, that, that's what I call a real kiss. <laughs> hey, yeah. Oh, very good. Sealed with a kiss. And now, uh, uh, let's think of more practical things. Uh, perhaps they're tired or hungry. Uh, in a very well... Oh, don't talk of food. We did nothing else on the boat but eat at all hours of the day. What I'd like is to change my clothes. Did you call, sir? Yes, Anna Faber. About dinner. Uh, only they don't seem to want any. But won't you really have anything? Anna Faber's taken so much trouble preparing it. Well, after all, it's better that way. With so many things happening, I've forgotten the kitchen. The hot punch will be cold and the cold soup hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one thing at least you can't refuse me. I made it myself. You remember how you used to come home from school? Yelling? No. <laughs> Not. Tart with honey? Uh, you hear that, Hero Vapor? <laughs> no, go and take them out of the oven and put a spot of the very best honey on them before they cool off. Right away. Will you be needing me any more tonight, Mom? Um, no, that'll be all, Felisa. Good night. Good night, Felisa. Oh, good night, all. Uh, good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Now, come and let me show you your room, Isabel. And we'll see whether whether you think I'm right. In what, Grandma? 
an argument with Grandad. Just fancy, he was insisting on putting in twin beds, saying that times have changed and this and that. But we believe in the old way, don't we, my girl? As God wills. The old way? Don't worry. There's a communicating door to another room. You didn't answer, Isabel. Oh, yes, Grandma. As God wills. Let's go. Not too fast, Eugenia, now. Careful with those stairs. Yeah, don't talk nonsense. A heart that has put up with what mine has is capable of anything. You take my arm. And that I will. With a young arm beside me, I can face old age and stairs. And without a stick. There. With the strength of my own two feet and of my two grandchildren. There. Well, how do you think it's going? Oh, marvellous. How lively she is and, and how happy. She's changed completely. Thank you with all my heart. I'll never be able to repay you for what you're doing in this house. I'm enjoying it. I'm an artist at heart and nothing thrills me so much as overcoming difficulties. And the one thing I regret is that from now on everything is going to be too easy. You think we've got over the worst? Oh, I'm sure of it. The big danger was the first meeting. If I had allowed myself to be overcome by emotion in that embrace and, and let her look calmly at me, we should have been lost. That's why I squeezed her so hard that it brought tears to her eyes. A little mist over the eyes and 20 years' absence help a lot. I'm not surprised the way you carried it off. Oh, you've had experience and you have the coolness of an artist. But the girl did marvellously for a beginner. No, the girl's not bad. She has possibilities, but... oh. That sobbing in Grandma's arms. Oh, what do you mean? Didn't the sobbing sound natural to you? No, too natural. That's what was wrong. You never know with women. You prepare a scene most carefully for them. And when the time comes, they allow their feelings to interfere with the job in hand and spoil everything. And we must keep an eye on her. Yes, I see. She's, she's so new and spontaneous, she, she might give us away without thinking. And with that amazing memory of the old lady, uh, the less we leave them alone together, the better. And uh, what do you think of doing now? Well, the usual in such cases... Family chat before bed, memories of the past, travels... Do you uh, remember all the details? Oh, don't worry. Where my geography fails, I'll use my imagination. Uh, you see to it that the family chat doesn't last too long, just in case. If we get through the first evening, there'll be no danger. Quiet. Here's my wife coming downstairs. Ah. Are you alone, Eugenia? Yes. yes. <laughs> she didn't make a single mistake. He knows the house better than I do. What do you think of the little enemy? Really wonderful. And there are two things especially that delight me about oh, her. Only two? What's the first? Well, the first is the perfectly natural way she speaks Spanish. It wasn't her family English. Uh, well, I'll tell you. Her parents were English, but her grandfather, uh, one of her grandfathers, was Spanish. Of course, that explains it. It's the language of her childhood, of the bedtime stories. Nothing to do with it. For a woman in love, the only language is her husband's. That's what I like. Quite right. Uh, what's the other thing you like about her? Something that you yourself haven't noticed. It's something very few women have. And there's a look in her eyes... It is more beautiful than the eyes themselves. Now, have you noticed that? I knew there was something I noticed, but I didn't know what. Well, now you do. So learn to know what you've got. Uh, have you uh, spoken to him yet, Fernando? Uh, what about? Uh, I guessed you'd be afraid. But it has to be done, and better now that we're alone. A secret? The only one I didn't dare to mention in my letters. That last night... When you went away, you know, your granddad didn't know what he was doing. He was beside himself. Oh, none of these sad memories, please. Fortunately, you knew how to look after yourself. But a young lad alone in the world. If your life had taken a different turn, I mean, whose fault would it have been? And that's what your granddad hasn't dared to admit aloud, but... But I know that in his own conscience, not a day has passed that he hasn't regretted it. On the contrary, he did what was right. And if there's one thing to which I owe a debt of gratitude and respect, it's to this hand that made me a man. 
Thank you, Granddad. Here are the tarts, Mum. They're a little overdone, but they smell good. Ah, quick, Isabel, come downstairs. The tarts with honey have arrived. Uh, the first one for you. Ah, uh, here, I'll take two. Mmm. <laughs> Hurry up, darling. Mauricio has talked about them so much, I'm dying to taste them. <laughs> I'll have two as well. You, you like them? Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, they're good. <laughs> Careful, darling, you'll <laughs> choke. <laughs> A glass of good wine helps them, darling. We have a light Rioja and a good old burgundy. You <laughs> haven't any of that homemade wine that you used to make with raisins and orange peel. Mine, Heno Weber, mine. Now get it out of the cupboard. Yes, madam. Well, it's not really a wine. It's a liqueur for women, but it has a kick in it. You'll see. You'll see. Are you going to drink? Tonight, mm. yes. Uh, no matter what happens. And don't you get angry, for it'll make no difference. You like uh, homemade pastry, don't you, my girl? Well... She loves it. it. It was the first thing she said when she came off the ship. Oh, then we're going to have lots to do together. Well, now, let's drink, then. To the, to the happiest evening of my life. And to your country, Isabel. You too, Henoveva. Everyone under her roof is Grandma's family. Oh, thank you, sir. Health and happiness. Health and, and happiness. happiness. <laughs> ah. Well, now, what do you think of it? Oh, it certainly has a kick. You must give me the recipe, unless it's a family secret. There are no secrets from you in this house. You can go to bed now, Innovator. Good night. At what time do you want breakfast? Oh, we never worry about time. We either sleep like logs halfway through the morning, or we go down to the river at sunrise. <laughs> Good night, Good, Good night, night Innovator. <laughs> I remember once when you wrote to me about your trip along the St. Lawrence. Now, wasn't that the time that you carved my name on an oak tree? That's right. Well, I'd like you to tell me about that. What, the excursion to the Great Lakes? <gasps> That's some story. Just imagine a sledge pulled by 14 dogs with bells. Herds of deer on this side and over there in the pine woods, like an endless Christmas. And in the distance, the calm waters of the Great Lakes with the snowy peaks of the huge mountains piercing the sky. What? Are there mountains in the lakes country? <laughs> um, well, Mauricio exaggerates, so he calls anything a mountain. Once we saw a wild cat climbing a tree, and a week later he was talking about the tiger in the jungle. Uh, I meant hills. As Nova Scotia is so flat, any little hill seems like a mountain. But Nova Scotia is in the east. What's that to do with the Great Lakes? Is it to the east? Well, are you trying to tell me when I followed all your travels on Grandad's big atlas? <laughs> a big country, Canada. A very big country. A, a, another glass of wine? Uh, yes, please. And me too. Oh, oh, the last one. Now, this really is the last, Fernando. Fernandito. No. Oh, Fernandito. No. Oh, just one little finger. Oh, well. <laughs> yes, I like that. Oh, stingy. And uh, how's your business going? Hmm? Uh, which business? Oh, which business? The houses, the big hotels. Uh, have you built any churches? No, I'm a civil architect. Oh, what a pity. I'd like to have seen you solve that problem of the Gothic cathedrals. One third stone and two thirds glass. Oh, <laughs> the trouble I had with it. Have you studied architecture as well? If you were to study medicine someday, I'd take on the microbes. <laughs> and if you studied astronomy, I'd be there with a peaked cap and a telescope like this. <laughs> <laughs> but yours is the best profession. Men make houses and women fill them. Here's to civil architecture. Come on, Grandma. You've had too much excitement. You must have some rest. But tonight... Sleep tonight after waiting 20 years for this? Oh, the Canadian Mounties couldn't drag me to bed tonight. <laughs> oh, hey, you for your own good. Uh, no, no, we'll have some music, Isabel. I've been dying to hear you play that Irish song. And my heart is waiting for you. What? And my heart is waiting for you. Isn't that what it's called? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, it's the song I like best. And the one you were playing the day you met Mauricio. Don't you remember? Oh, yes. 
Yes. Well, uh, come along, darling. Over to the piano. The music at this time of night. Oh, you're, you're, you're mad. Can you play the piano? Ravel's Bolero with one finger. This is terrible. Uh, uh, not tonight, Grandma. Isabel is worn out from the journey. There's nothing so restful as music. Come uh, on. Tomorrow, some other day. Oh, why not now? Well, I may be superstitious, but... But something has gone wrong every time Isabel has played that song. Oh! Oh, didn't I tell you? What has happened? N nothing. The wine glass broke in my hand. Oh, have you cut your hand? Oh, it's nothing. Just a scratch. Quick, some alcohol and, and a bandage. No, no, never mind. Some wine on a handkerchief. There. Oh, does it hurt you? Oh, it's nothing, I assure you. The only thing that upsets me is that Granny won't have her music. Oh, well, never mind. Another little drop, Fernando. The last one. The last. <laughs> oh, oh, Granny, are oh. you all right? I, I just caught you in oh, time. That's enough, Eugenia. Now you must go to bed. Oh. Oh, it was nothing. This little rascal of a heart, which is everything good and everything bad to me. But don't think I'm dizzy. I just came over a little faint, that's all. Oh, do I have to go to bed so soon? It would be better. We'll talk again tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh. And the nights are so long. <laughs> Sleep well, Mauricio. Good night, my girl. If you're in the habit of reading before you go to bed, Mauricio, you know where the library is. Would you like a book? Something on architecture and a map of Canada. Are you coming, Fernando? Yes, my dear. Well, we'll have the Irish song tomorrow, eh? <laughs> Well, now, you two will not dream of anything better than yourself. <laughs> oh, the Irish song, eh? <sighs> well, that's over at last. I wish it were all over. I've never been through anything like it in all my life. It's like walking barefoot on knives. Well, the old lady is really dangerous. Her memory is faultless. Oh, she's thought of nothing else for years and years. Oh, what would happen to that poor woman if she found out the truth? That's up to us. We've got ourselves into this and it's too late to turn back. And it starts again tomorrow. For how long? Only a few days. Then we'll receive a cable calling us home and the memory will remain here forever. Why did you give me this to do? I, I can't manage it, Marithio. Are you so afraid? For her. What we're doing is probably good, but... Seeing her taken in like a happy young girl, it was as much as I could do to avoid blurting out the truth and asking her to forgive us. Just as I feared, letting your heart take charge. That won't get us anywhere. I've done all I could. Didn't I carry it off well? At first, yes. That shyness when you came in and that memory scene were very good, but that sob when you threw yourself into her arms. I, I couldn't help it. I, I too know what it is to live all alone and to hope. You must correct that right away. Art doesn't come from the heart, it comes from the head. Didn't you feel anything ever? Real emotion is never artistic. For example, did you notice the way I ate the nut tarts with honey? Well, if there are two things I can't stand, they are honey and nuts. That's what I call an artistic conscience. Did you like them? Delicious. Well, that's a matter of opinion. What about that tremor in your voice when you first met her? An elementary trick. Even the worst actors know that one. That long, silent embrace, even making her cry. All worked out beforehand. It's harder to see clearly with tears in one's eyes. You see now? I do now. It seems I have a lot to learn. Quite a lot, but you'll make it, Isabel. Well, why do you call me Isabel when there's no one here? My name is Martha. Not here. We're leading another life and we must forget our own lives completely. No confusion. Very well. Tell me where I went wrong this evening and I'll correct it. Uh, the kiss for a start. Or, or rather, the two kisses. Uh, the first one was too... Fraternal? Fraternal. Three years of marriage is too short for such coldness. But the second one, that wasn't a three years kiss either. Too much? Too much. In art, you have to find the right level. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Something has happened to you in the last few minutes. You look at me differently. You've changed. Couldn't it be that you've changed? Listen, Mauricio. The other day, when you said that your bird imitator was better than a real nightingale... You were serious, weren't you? Absolutely. A mere bird, no matter how marvellous it might be, can never compare with an artist. Then you really think that art is greater than life? Always. Look at that jacaranda tree in the garden. Today it is something because it gives flowers and shade. But tomorrow, when it dies, as all trees die, silently and on its feet, no one will ever remember it. But if a great artist had painted it, it would live forever. Anything else? No. That's all I wanted to know. I'm going to bed. Oh, just a moment. 
I've only corrected your mistakes so far, but it would be unfair if I didn't also praise your successes. Oh, have I done something well? That's not so bad. One thing in particular. The trick to get out of playing the piano. Oh, the business of cutting my hand. Was it good? I couldn't have done it better myself. Uh, what did you use for blood? Your lipstick? That's it, my lipstick. Oh, I thought so right away. Congratulations. Uh, oh. What's the matter? N nothing. My nerves. Here, wait. Let me look at your hand. <sighs> did you really cut yourself on the glass? I couldn't think of anything else. You have to invent a lie, but the truth is so easy. Good night. You won't be offended if I tell you something. No. You're too soft-hearted. You'll never be a real artist. Thank you. That's the best thing you said to me this evening. And you won't be offended if I tell you something. No. If one day all the trees in the world except one had to disappear, I'd like it to be that jacaranda. Forgiven? Forgiven. Good night, Marithia. See you tomorrow, Martha Isabel. It can't be true. I just can't believe it. No matter how much I think of it, are you sure? Well, I didn't want to believe it either, but... Well, I tell you, I saw it with my own eyes. Well, why didn't you tell me before? To tell you the truth, I didn't dare. It's such a delicate matter. If you hadn't cornered me with all your questions, I would never have said a word. Oh, that's bad. We must get this cleared up at once, and the sooner the better. But suppose I was wrong. Well, you won't be the only one. I've also been putting two and two together these last few days, and it always comes to the same thing. I knew in my heart that there was something strange going on here. You were suspicious, too? Since the first evening. A look here, a word there, but... But that's the last thing I would have thought of. Where's Isabel? Are you going to talk to her? Right away. Mm. Do you think I'm the sort of woman who spies through keyholes for the truth? Where's Isabel? She's picking some hydrangeas. Well, call her. Oh, please, ma'am. Think about it. I call her, I tell you. Huh. Isabel? Isabel? Huh. She's coming. Leave us alone. Certainly. Did you call me? Come here. Oh. Look me right in the eyes and answer me straight. What have you been hiding from me these last few days? I... Both of you. Granny... No, don't look away. Answer. I don't know what you mean. You know only too well. And it's no use pretending anymore. Oh, I know it's a very intimate thing to have to admit. Perhaps painful. But I'm talking to you as a grandmother to a granddaughter. As woman to woman. Isabel, what is happening between you and Maurizio? Please, tell me what you suspect. It's not what I suspect, my girl, it's a fact. This morning, when Enoveva took breakfast up, you were sleeping alone in your room, and Maurizio was sleeping in the next room. <gasps> now, can you explain what that means? The two rooms. Is that all? Well, I don't see anything funny in it. Quite the opposite. Doesn't that nervous laugh mean something? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, it's just that you spoke so seriously. I thought you'd discovered something terrible. Well, don't you think it's serious? First of all, a married couple sleeping apart is immoral. But it can mean something worse, that you've stopped loving each other. Of course not, Granny. How could you even think that? Well, haven't I a reason? None at all. It, it's just that mosquitoes come in through the garden window and Maurizio can't stand them. And what about you? What sort of marriage is this which can be broken by, by a mosquito? It, it wasn't one. Or oh, two or three. It was a whole plague. Well, what of it? When I was your age, the ten plagues of Egypt wouldn't have separated me from my husband. You must promise me that it won't happen again. Do you think that Marithio and I don't love each other? Too much in front of me. But very different when I'm not here. Yesterday I was at the window when you were having tea in the garden. Not a word or a glance between the two of you. Oh, silence doesn't mean anything. There are so many ways in which a man and woman can be together. Can you swear with your hand on your heart that you're perfectly happy? Why do you ask? Hmm? Oh, I don't know. Something strange between the two of you. I've noticed how subdued you are with him. As though he were the boss. Well, in, in real love, nobody gives the orders. Both obey. Oh, Marithio is so superior to me in everything. He doesn't need to give orders for me to obey. 
It's bad enough that you should think that, but for heaven's sake, don't let him know it or you're lost. They always say that love is rather like those Chinese carriages, where one person sitting very comfortably inside while the other one pulls. Well, it seems that this time it's your turn to pull. What does it matter if the one sitting inside is mine? I only wish the load was heavier and the road harder so that I deserve more what comes at the end. Whatever are you saying? You speak of your husband as though as though he weren't already yours. As though you still had to win him. Well, that's because you can't understand all that Marithia means to me. It's more than love. It's my whole life. The day that I first knew him, I, I was so desperate that I could have died in a corner like a stray dog. He passed by with a, a bunch of roses and a word. And that word restored to me all that I thought was lost. Oh, there, there, my dear. <laughs> now, to tell you the truth, I, I don't know how to take you. A moment ago, I was worried that you didn't love him enough, and oh, now I'm almost afraid to see that you, that you love him so much. But not a word of this to him, do you hear? Now, you take advantage of the fact that you're young to jump into the carriage and let him pull a little. <laughs> That's what a man's for. Oh, now, look out. Here he comes. Ah, secrets between wife and grandmother? A bad thing for the husband. And what makes you think we're talking about you? Has Isabel been saying anything against me? Nothing of the sort. I, I, I was saying how happy I am. Oh, and is that why you were crying? Some women have an extraordinary way of being happy. You're too accustomed to having everything fall into your lap. And take care how you treat her from now on, for she isn't alone. There are two of us now. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, wait a minute. I've something in the cupboard for you. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are. It seems that you need this. What is it? A mosquito repellent. Yeah. Now, I'm going to have a walk in the garden. What was she talking about? What mosquitoes? Some that I had to invent. This morning, Hanaveva found you sleeping in the guest room. Oh, I knew it would happen. The only day I forgot to lock the door. Oh, don't worry. It's fixed up. Are you sure? Hasn't she suspected anything? Nothing. Thanks to you, I'm learning to lie so naturally. That's a very delicate way of calling me a swindler. Imaginative. It was a professional compliment. I suppose you were scared stiff, as usual. One gets used to everything. Oh, well, fortunately, it's nearly over. Early tomorrow, we'll receive a cable from Canada, and in the afternoon, two air tickets. No. Do you mean we're going already? Yes. The office is taking care of everything. Couldn't you wait a little? Just one day? Why? We've already done all we can for the old lady. It isn't for her, Marithio. It's for me now. I need to get used to the idea. I understand you less and less. I gave you one of the most difficult jobs to start with, and you've done it amazingly well, just like a young wife, really happy. Are you going to be afraid again now that the curtain is about to fall? I don't know. I'm afraid of what you would call the, the grand finale. But the farewell is the easiest of all. A little shudder as you pack your bags. A long look around the house as though you were caressing every corner of it. It's not even necessary to talk. Every so often you let something fall as though you can't help it. Something falling in the silence is more moving than any word. Why are you looking at me like that? I admire you. More sarcasm? Not at all. I really admire you. It's amazing the way that you dreamers can only see more clearly what is far away. Tell me, Marithio, what color are the Mona Lisa's eyes? Dark olive. And what color are the sea siren's eyes? Sea green. And what color are mine? Yours are... Oh. Well, yes, you have me there. Now, now don't be angry. It, it may seem terrible, but I couldn't even tell you the color of my own eyes. Brown, flecked with hazel, with a little spark of gold when you laugh, with a shade of gray when you talk and you're thinking of something else. I'm sorry, Not I... Not at all. And when I'm packing the bags tomorrow, if something slips from my hands as, as though I can't help it, don't worry that it might be through emotion. It'll only be because I've had a good teacher. 
Thanks, Mauricio. I think I'll go and join Granny in the garden. Hello. She looks annoyed. What has happened? Huh? Oh, nothing. Elisa, answer the door, will you? If it's the newspapers, take them straight into my room. Yes, sir. Uh, isn't this the book you were looking for? The latest archaeological discoveries? I'm not interested. I've made a more sensational discovery. Oh, you have? When? Right now. After a great deal of excavation, I've just discovered that I'm a perfect idiot. Excuse me, I must go after her. I wish I knew what is happening. It's someone to see you, sir. At this time of night. I'm not expecting anyone, and I'm not in to anyone. For me, you are. I've made too long a journey to have the door closed on me. What right have you to come into my house? Who are you? Have I changed so much in these 20 years? Marithio. I don't see why you should be so surprised as though I were a ghost. Didn't you receive my cable saying I was coming? It, it isn't possible. The Saturnia went down with all hands. And you were delighted to hear it, weren't you? That's enough, Marithio. Why have you come? Do you need to ask? What well, lack of imagination. At least you can't think I'm going on my knees to beg your forgiveness. No, I know you too well. I've followed your whole life, and I know what to expect of you. I'm glad of that. It'll save a lot of painful explanations. Painful especially for you. For me? That's well, the least I could expect. Haven't you felt responsible for one moment for the life I dragged out far away from my own home? Don't try to shift your faults onto others. All that you've done had its beginnings here. So your conscience is easy. I did what I should. And if necessary, I would do it again. A hundred times. You'd like to, perhaps. But I'm afraid you won't be able to. The kid you used to know has grown a bit harder. Is that a threat? Just a warning. I know from experience that no one has his path ready made. Everyone has to make his own as best he can. And mine leads to this house. Then what do you intend? I've already told you what I could choose. But I'm reasonable, and I'll agree to take only part of it. In a word, I need money. Just as I thought. How much? Oh, that's the difficult part. Much as I regret it, I can't offer you a reduced price as between friends. I'm in a terrible spot, you understand. Not with the police, I'm used to that. Now it's with a gang and they don't forgive. I'm not asking for explanations. How much? Would 500,000 pesetas seem a lot? Are you mad? Where do you think I could get all that? Think it over. I know you don't care a rap about me, but you've a good name. Would you like to see it in the papers or in the police records? I can't give you that amount. I, I swear I couldn't, even if I wanted to. Oh, I'm not surprised. It was always a job to drag money out of you. But there's someone else who wouldn't let me die in the gutter if she could save me. Where's Granny? Now listen, Marithio, for pity's sake. She knows nothing of your real life. For her, the wild boy of 20 years ago has become a happy man, returning... Full of memories to his home. A fairy story. Unfortunately, I'm far too old for fairy stories. Where is she? I won't let you. Think of all you can destroy in one moment. I have no time to lose. Stand away. No, you're not going out of here. I don't think you can raise your hand on me again. That was easy with a boy, but it's not the same with a man. Granny! Stop shouting. When a man is ready for anything, he doesn't shout. Come out of here with me. And I know who you are. Later. In just a moment, she is going to come through this door. Do you hear? If you say one word in front of her, just one word, I'll kill you. You're what? I'd even kill you this moment. Oh, Granny, you must believe. <laughs> it's a bit. I've never heard such nonsense in my life. Are you serious? Do you mean to tell me that those those little green lights of the fireflies are... Uh, oh, oh, I beg your pardon. I thought you were alone, Mauricio. It's nothing. This gentleman is a stranger and he lost his way. I'm going to show him the way. Are you coming with me, sir? Yes, I'm coming. Mauricio. I won't be a moment, Isabel. I'll be right back. This way, sir. I beg your pardon, madam. Good night. Good night. How strange. How very strange. Shall 
I pack the shoes at the bottom? Oh, yes, Genevieve, at the bottom. Ah. And the dresses? Are they all right, folded like this? It doesn't matter. Oh, but it does. You know better than me, as I've never travelled. Is this all right? Yes. For your own good. Can't you see? It's worse to say nothing. Say something, please. What can I say? Anything. Even if it means nothing. Like when you're going through somewhere dark and you start singing. Oh, this silence is like a funeral. Yes, Enoveva. Packing a bag is something like a funeral. It's not so bad for those who are going. You're going back to your home with your whole life before you. But she... Have you talked to her? Not I. Nor anyone. She's still shut up in her room, not stirring a hand or opening her lips. But what's the meaning of this silence? Like a protest. She knew that we should have to go sooner or later. Is it my fault? The fault is time, which always flows the wrong way. I remember when the boat was coming. Every minute seemed like a century in this house. Monday, Shamaveva, Monday. That Monday never seemed to come. And now what happened to that Monday? And the next day, and the others. My mother used to say, there's one clock for waiting and another for goodbye. And the waiting one is always slow. Oh, I'm sorry. I've dropped some of your handkerchiefs. Thank you for that, Henoveva. Thank you? Why? Oh, nothing. Something I was thinking of. I'll go and wash them again. They're time to dry. Oh, here is your husband. Is there any hope of settling at Marithio? None at all. No matter what we've offered him, it's no use. He's coming here himself to say the last word. And you're going to let him come to this house? Unfortunately, it's his house. Nothing works with him, neither reason, entreaties or threats. He has come prepared for anything and he won't give in. So, all our work is going to be destroyed in a minute, before our very eyes. And are we going to look on with our arms folded? It's no use having reason on our side. He has strength and truth on his side. I don't recognize you. When I first met you, hearing you speak, you, you seemed like a, a miracle worker with a new kind of magic in your hands. And now a truth arrives at your door, which hasn't even the advantage of truth's greatness. And here you stand, tied, hand and foot. Well, what can I do? When he found out what was going on, we put all the cards in his hands. Now he doesn't need to beg. He can calmly play at blackmail. We have nothing to hope for, Isabel, nothing. You can still do one good thing in this house. One last thing. Confess the truth to Granny yourself. What should be gained by that? It's like taking off a bandage. You do it slowly, with, with loving hands. Don't wait for him to wrench it off. I can't. I haven't the nerve. I don't want to see a wound open which I'm not able to cure. Let's get away from here as soon as possible. To your nice, comfortable house. To amuse yourself building dreams which have this awakening. No, Marithio, you go alone. You surely don't think of staying here. I wish to God I could. But nor can I go from this invented life to another equally false one with you. But where will you go, then? Are you thinking of going back to your old life? It seems incredible, doesn't it? But that's the greatest lesson I've learned here. My room was small and poor, but I don't need any more, for it suited me. In winter, the cold used to come in through the windows, but it was a clean cold, fitting me like my own clothes. There weren't any roses at the window, only some dusty geraniums. But it was all suited to me, and all my own. My poverty, my cold, my geraniums. And you want to return to that? You shan't. Who's going to stop me? I am. You? Listen. Now that there's no longer any teacher or pupil, now that for the first time we can talk as equals, I'll tell you my story as if it weren't mine, so that you may see it more clearly. One day... A lonely girl was taken from her world into another marvellous world. She suddenly had everything which she lacked before. A family, a house with trees, a young wife love. Naturally, it was only acting out of farce. But she couldn't judge. And she became too involved. And what should have been a stage became her real house. When she said, Granny, it, it wasn't just a line from a play, but a cry that welled up from inside her. It made her blood throb with happiness. The dream lasted seven days, and this is the result. 
Now I know that my loneliness is going to be more difficult. My geranium's poorer, my cold colder, but they are my only truth. And I never want to dream again so that I never have another awakening. <laughs> Forgive me if I seem unjust. Only in one thing. Why do you imagine that this is only your story? Couldn't it be mine as well? What do you mean? That it also needed this house to discover my truth. Yesterday, I didn't even know the color of your eyes. Do you want me to tell you now what color they are at every hour of the day? And how their light changes when you open the window, when you look at the fire, when I come and when I go? Marithio. For seven nights, I have felt you sleeping on the other side of my door. You weren't mine, but I loved to hear you breathing beneath the same roof. Your breathing began to be part of me, and now the only thing I know is that I can't live without it. I need it near me forever, on my own pillow. What does it matter whether it is in my house or yours? Either of them can be ours. You decide. M Marithio. Marta Isabel. My truth. There he is. I'll speak to him. Not you. Leave me alone with him. Are you mad? I'll go and answer the door, sir. Very well, Felisa. Perhaps a woman might succeed where you would fail. I'll be close by. Just outside the door there. Don't be afraid. Now I'm strong for both of us. It's the man who came last night. He asked for madam. Tell him to come in here, Felisa. Oh, I don't need to. It seems he makes a habit of coming in without being asked. All right, you let me in. Now you can go. It's all right, Felisa. You may go. My false wife, eh? That's right. Pleased to meet you. At least I made a good choice. Thank you. I know the whole game here. The letters, the happy marriage, Granny's emotion. A fine story with a moral as well. Too bad it's ending so badly. It hasn't ended yet. For my part, if you want to carry on with it, you know my price. Too high. To sell off this house, the only thing left for these two old people so that they may die in peace. I could die in the gutter if I went without the money. My friends don't understand fairy tales, and they are good shots. Is that your last word? Again? Last night, your boyfriend asked for time to pay. I gave him till now, and I've had enough delay. Have you got the money or not? You know as well as I do that it's impossible. We'll soon find out. I suppose you've got the old lady locked up in her room, haven't you? Don't worry, I know the way. Don't move, not a step. I warn you that no woman has ever stopped me. Even the giving kind, let alone those who threaten. Get away. I, I beg you, think before it's too late. Do you know that one word from you can kill that woman? It can't be as bad as all that. Unfortunately, it is. It's only this make-believe that's keeping her alive. And a blow like this could be fatal. Are you so interested in her life? More than in my own. Then why waste time? We can discuss it the way I want. A plain deal. The old lady's life is worth 500,000 pesetas, isn't it? You swine. What, uh, what's happening here, Isabel? Granny. Oh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the same gentleman who was here last night. Do you uh, want anyone in this house? No one. He only came to say goodbye. It's true, you were going, weren't you? I haven't come all this way to go back with empty hands. Don't listen to him, Granny. Don't listen to him. Oh, are you mad? Well, what way is this to treat a visitor? Uh, forgive her. She's a little excited. Now, now, uh, leave us alone, Isabel. This gentleman has something important to say to me. Not he. I'll tell you afterwards. Just the two That's of us. That's enough, Isabel. Now, go out to the garden and don't come in for any reason until I call you. Do you hear? Not for any reason. Now, leave us. It, uh, it seems that you have something important to tell me. Won't you sit down? No, thank you. It can be said in a few words. So, you have come a long way to talk to me. Uh, where from? From Canada. Oh, a beautiful country. My grandson has come from there, too, a few days ago. Do you know my grandson? Very well. Better than you do yourself. Uh, that's possible. 
He's been away from me for such a long time. When he left this house... When he was thrown out for no reason. Exactly. When his grandfather threw him out for no reason, I was afraid for him. He was a hothead. But I was sure he was good at heart. I knew that he would only need to think of me to keep him to the right path. And that's the way it was. Afterwards, his letters came, telling me of his new life. And, and at last, he came himself. I know the story. What I can understand is how you swallowed it at your age. Did it never occur to you to suspect that those letters might have been false? False? Everything. The letters and this ridiculous story and even the grandson in person. Have you become blind or are you pretending to close your eyes? What are you trying to insinuate? That that cheerful and happy boy who is living under my roof is not my grandson? That my real grandson, the last drop of my blood, is this poor scoundrel in front of me? Was that what you came to tell me, Marithio? Granny! And you came all the way across the sea to deliver this blow to an old woman. You can be proud of yourself. That's really manly. So that's it. Do you mean to say you were in I as well? No, I didn't know till last night. And that second when I saw you suddenly opened my eyes. And after that, it didn't take me long to make your grandfather confess. It was so dreadful that I couldn't bring myself to believe it. I had only one hope left. At least he won't dare in front of me. And I've waited until this moment for one decent word, one gesture of pity, for some slight hesitation, something that might, might help me to forgive you. But no. No, you've gone straight to the wound with your filthy fingers, right to where it hurts most. I couldn't do otherwise, Granny. I need that money to save my skin. I know the formula. I've just heard it from your own lips, and I'd have given you all you wanted just, just for one tear. But it's too late for tears. And I'll give you nothing for that skin which has nothing of mine beneath it. Are you going to let me die on the street like uh, a dog? Isn't that your code? Then let it at least have enough dignity to stick by it. Think. Not only could they kill me, but I may have to kill Oh, for God's sake, Mauricio, that's enough. If you've anything of a man left in you, if you still wish to do something for me, get out of this house at once. This very moment. Do you hate me so much? Go at once. Can't you see that I can't stand anymore? My knees are trembling, and I don't, I don't want to collapse in front of you. Here. Get out! The blame will be yours! Get out! Coward! 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 Oh, my poor Eugenia. Didn't I tell you that it would be too much for you? Well, now you see you were wrong. The sharp pain is over now. The worst will be that which comes afterwards in the silence and enfolds me. But I'm used to that. We're old friends. The young people haven't heard anything, have they? Aren't you going to tell them? I never... I owe them the best days of my life. And now I'm the one who's going to do something for them. I'm going to call them in. Mauricio? Isabel? Where do you get the strength? It's the last day, Fernando. I don't want them to see me down. Dead inside, but on my feet. Like a tree. Not a word now. Grandma, dear. Grandma. Oh, no, why these 
Why these sad faces? There'll be time enough for that tomorrow. Has that man gone? A moment ago. And what an extraordinary creature. He says that he's come a long way to speak to me, and he stands looking at me in silence, and then goes out as he came in. Without saying anything? Well, it seemed that he was going to say something important, but, but his voice suddenly failed him, and, and he couldn't go on. And he said nothing? Not a word? Only... Forgive me. Can you understand? Oh, some escaped lunatic. Well, have you uh, packed your bags? Oh, there's still time. Uh, Fernando, go and cut them a spray from the jacaranda. They'd like to have it as a souvenir. Yes, my dear. Oh, oh and the, um, uh, the recipe for the liqueur. Now, we mustn't forget it at the last moment. Uh, have you a pencil and paper? Yes, Granny. Here you are, Isabel. You write it down. Yes, yes. Now write it down, my girl, and we'll see how it turns out. All the women from this house have made it well. Now, now, write down uh, equal quantities of distilled water and alcohol. <laughs> what uh, time does the plane leave? Early tomorrow morning. Tomorrow uh, put in a, a quart of must of raisins. Uh, Muscatel, if you have any. You'll um, write to me, won't you, Isabel? Yes, Granny. I will. Always. I'd like to see the great woods and the, and the sledges. Yes. Uh, 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 the whites of two eggs, well beaten. And, um, and later... When you have a son. A son. You dropped your pencil, darling. Here it is. Well shredded bitter orange peel. A nut of raw cinnamon for flavor. Uh, and, uh, oh, two drops of essence of rosemary. And uh, then uh, you'll want some. In Trees Die on Their Feet by Alejandro Casona, translated and adapted by George Leeson, the part of Isabel was played by Beryl Calder, that of the director by Simon Lack, Grandmother by Olga Lindo, and Balboa by Norman Claridge. The rest of the cast was as follows. The other, Edward Kelsey. Professor, Earl Grey. Henoveva, Kathleen Helm. Hunter, Gordon Faith. Felisa, Patricia Leventon, Helena, Polly Murch. The production, which was recorded, was by Norman Wright. <laughs>